Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless, bless, bless His holy name, our God's name, our Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit's name. Bless the Lord and forget not His benefits. Our God is good. He is a merciful God, a giving God, an honorable God. And, and I just want to join all the angels in, in, in Isaiah chapter 6 that are constantly before His throne in His glory saying, Holy, holy, holy. It is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And I want you to join me as we, we go to Revelation chapter 4 and, and join the cherubim who are constantly 24 hours just before the throne singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All our honor and power and praise and wealth and goodness belong to our Lord. And we just we just worship Him. We just worship Him because He is a giver. All, you know, He's sitting in the throne of grace at this time. And, and people live today, even if they don't know Him, even if they hate Him, even if they don't want to come to Him, even if they disdain Him, even if they scorn Him, He still gives them life. The reason why you're holding up and your cells aren't bursting everywhere and you're put together is because of the breath of Jesus Christ and the breath of the Holy Spirit by the love of God, even if you hate God, even if you don't know God. That's how merciful he is. He threw all his judgment, all his anger, all his wrath on his son on the cross. Jesus Christ died for you and me on the, on the cross of Calvary. He bled and died. And that was God's judgment because sin had a, has a price to pay and sin's price is death. And Jesus took that death for you and me on the cross and rose on, from on the, he was buried and then from, from the grave he rose on the third day to, to say death has no hold on me. Uh, the grave has no hold on me. Sin has no hold on me. Jesus was sinless. You and I are sinners. Just like I open up heart arteries and it's clogged and there's junk in there from smoking, from diabetes, from cholesterol, from eating french fries. All that junk is in the coronary arteries and I go in and open it and, and then life comes to the heart. Just like that, our spiritual heart arteries are, are clogged with sin and upon sin and iniquity and dirtiness and nastiness and filthiness. And God has come with His blood to open that up. And He's the greatest surgeon. He is the, the surgeon of surgeons, the physician of physicians. And He's the one that can open up your soul. So come to Him today and let's worship Him. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 4. And if you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to study, we're going to study how um, uh, Jesus Christ was tempted. But before we do that, I just want to worship Him with you, beloved, because we are here to love our God. We, we're not here to raise our name and give praises to ourselves and, and pat ourselves on the back and say, Oh, you're great and bless you. And we're here to magnify God. We're here to lift one name. That's Jesus Christ. Oh, what a beautiful name right now as you hear his word being spoken. I just want you to know that he will heal you uh, from your spiritual sicknesses and he will heal you from your physical sicknesses and, and he will heal you from oppressions and he will heal your uh, every single, every single thing you're facing. He can heal, he can touch. And as I'm speaking, your, your health is going to change. Not because of me. I, I'm just a man. I, I'm not the generator. The Holy Spirit is the generator. Jesus Christ is the healer. Our God is the lover of your soul. I'm just speaking His Word. And His Word is going to go out. And it's going to heal you. It's, it's going to be amazing. What doctors cannot do, my Jesus can. What doctors don't understand, my Jesus does understand. What doctors can't give the right medication at the right time to heal certain diseases, my God is able. And as we speak, I proclaim you are healed and you were healed according to 1 Peter 2, 24. <laughs> Blessed be the name of our Lord. The song that's coming to my mind, and I, I want you to worship with me. I'm not a singer. I'm just a lover of the Lord. I, I just want to sing with you for a second before we get into the Word of God. You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. Lord God, you are here, moving in our midst. 
We worship you. We worship you. You're the way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here. We worship you, Lord. We bow before you and we give you thanks. You are here, you're healing our bodies and souls. We worship you. We worship, worship you. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is good. He is good. Turn with me um, with your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. Isn't it beautiful that we have the Word of God at the, uh, in the Old Testament? They didn't have the Word written, uh, and they didn't know Adam and Eve didn't have the Word. They, they couldn't go to the Word, but you and I, we can go to the Word. Uh, this is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh according to John chapter 1. And then in, John, in Matthew chapter 4, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And this is amazing to me that you, we, we also always want to be led to great places, uh, to places of success, to places of goodness, to places of mercy, to places of favor, to praise, uh, places of, of incredible wealth, and to uh, places of people going, you're doing great, uh, bravo for you, and that, that's where we want to be. And at times, the Spirit will lead us to the wilderness. The Spirit led Jesus Christ to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It just amazes me that this is where we don't want to be, but this is where Jesus was led to be. This is the beginning of his ministry. And how do you begin the ministry? With a big bang, with Instagram going wild and Facebook going wild and people going, oh, oh, here's the greatest leader. We've been waiting for such a leader like this. No, it begins with... With going to the wilderness where you're on one-on-one -on -one with God and in the wilderness is where we see the way. It's in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. It says, forget the former things, don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Can't you perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert. I'm making a way in the wilderness. I'm making a way when you are stuck. I'm making a way. That's how Jesus makes a way. Not when everything is open and free and good, but when it's stuck and when things aren't right. And how does he show his light when it's dark around you? And, 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 and people are, are, are trying to sabotage and, and, and take you out. How do you see in the darkness the light, the light Jesus Christ? And then how about the wasteland? You're like, my, uh, my life is a wasteland. I, I can't take it anymore from, from COVID to other things, to, to sickness, to family problems, to difficulties at the job. And, and I'm trying to do what I can, but I just I feel like I'm a wasteland. Even my body, my soul, it just feels like a wasteland. How else are we going to have streams in the wasteland when there is no wasteland? So Jesus is taken to the wilderness and he, in uh, chapter 4 of Matthew, verse 2, it says that, and, when, and he had fasted for 40 days. This is, I'm like, why not 39 days, or why not 30 days, or why not 50 days? You know, well, 40 comes on, I mean, if you look at, if, when you look at this Bible, the, the number 40, on and on, you'll see that, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 7, where the flood came, and, and Noah was in the ark with his family. How long did it rain? It rained 40 days and 40 nights when Moses was in the wilderness after he had murdered. Oh, look, look who God chooses. You're like, I'm not good enough. Uh, I've done bad things. I, I just, God doesn't want me. Oh, God wants you. He wants you all the way. He wants you 100%. He loves you. He's crazy in love with you. He just hugs you, loves you, gives to you. Look who he chose. He chose a murderer. <laughs> Moses murdered. And what happened after he murdered? Look, uh, by the way, another murderer. Oh my gosh, he wrote almost uh, two thirds of this New Testament. Saul, Saul who became Paul, a murderer. Not just one people, he murdered many people. 
Look who God chooses. Why wouldn't he choose you? Why wouldn't he choose me? Jesus uses people who think they can't be used. So prepare yourself as God chooses you to do great works, great works through you in the name of Jesus Christ. In 40 days, uh, so he, Moses hangs out in the wilderness for 40 years uh, before God calls him out, before God uh, shows up with a burning bush and says, come Moses, uh, watch where you're standing. You're standing on holy ground. You gotta lead my people to, out, of the, out of Egypt. And then once they go through the Red Sea uh, and and they uh, they get into the wilderness and, and Moses goes on the Mount Sinai, how long? Forty days and forty nights. Do you remember when when um, uh, what's his name? Goliath, the crazy Goliath, the, the Goliath of the Philistines who who ruled and and he taunted Saul for 40 days and 40 nights before David came on the scene. There's a, a lot of 40s uh, throughout the Bible and we read, I believe it's in Deuteronomy, um, and, and, and we read that it, the, the people got slashes on the back when they, when they did wrong, when they, when they were caught in, in some kind of wrong, uh, whether it's murder or whatever, they were gonna uh, get 40 lashes to the back. And that's where we get in the New Testament, 40 minus one. Paul all got beat up 40 minus one five times and so uh, the, the 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 word 40 the number 40 comes out over and over again when uh, the Israelites were under the rule where the judges were like Samson they were under the rule of the Philistines for 40 years before before rescue came when Jesus here is in the wilderness for 40 days Jesus after he resurrects and rises from the dead from the time of his uh, rising from the dead to his ascension is 40 days so 40 comes out a lot and you could say the 40 number is just 40 or a lot of times it has has to do with trials and tribulations and wilderness and judgment and uh, you may be in your 40th day and you're like get me out of here but there's a reason why there's a wilderness because there's a way in the wilderness and Jesus is the way the only way and there are streams in the wasteland. And Jesus is the stream. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So he's there for 40 days and 40 nights. And then we, we read that afterward, he was hungry. This is amazing. Jesus was hungry in verse 3. Uh, you know, it's, uh, in ver that's at the end of verse 2. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Jesus at times was tired. Jesus was sleepy. You know, in the boat, when he was sleeping, Satan tried to actually kill Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and then Jesus uh, and the disciples were like, hey, help us, we're going to die. And kind of sounds like you and me when we're in trouble. Help us. Um, and Jesus is like, peace, be still. And the waves calm down. Uh, Jesus is the ruler of all things at all times. And now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Isn't this interesting? Now Satan is there one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ. They are not equal. Satan is a created being, is an angel and a fallen angel. Jesus Christ is God. They are not equal. But Satan wants to be worshipped. He wants to be ruler of the world. And he comes to the Son of God. Isn't this interesting? First he says, if. You know, he always gives you a little confusing thing. Did God really say that? Well, we're like, hey, it is written. It's right here. The Bible is right here. Adam and Eve may not have had it. But we got it. It's here. Did he really say it? Well, let me look. I'm just going to turn and look. Yes, God did say that he will never leave me and forsake me. So shut up, Satan, and get out of my face. But look at, that's one. He always introduces a, mm, if you think so, I'm not sure. You think, that's Satan. And then listen to this. If you are the son of God, you know, he just, S Satan leaves things out. He just left out a word. You know what word he left? Well, the only way you can find out is we go to Matthew chapter 3, and we go to the end of Matthew chapter 3, and we go to verse 17, and it says, And suddenly Jesus is being baptized by John the Baptist, and suddenly a voice came from heaven. Whose voice is this God's voice, his Father? It says, This is my beloved 
son in whom I am well pleased, my beloved son. And, and here Satan's like, if you are the son of God, no beloved. See, that, Satan doesn't want you to know who you are. You, you are, uh, according to 1 John chapter 3, 1, you are the children of the living God. You know, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says that we are adopted sons and daughters of the living God. And in, in 1 Peter 2, 9, it says that we are a chosen generation. We're God's own special people. This is, this is who we are. And when we don't know who we are, that's when Satan tricks us. But when you know who you are, you're like, get out of my face, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't belong here. Bye. B-Y-E, bye. So, the first temptation is, Jesus is hungry. I mean, this is when temptations come, by the way. Watch it. When you're hungry, when you're lonely, when you're angry, ooh, that's when, that's when temptations come at you. It's funny when you're in a rush on the freeway and you're, you're in your lane and it's not your lane because it ain't got your name on it. But people are like, that's my lane. I'm riding and I'm, this is my lane. If somebody cuts in front of you or somebody is tailgating you, you just go all kinds of crazy. Be careful. <laughs> I'm talking to you and me. Uh, be careful. Let's be careful because when we get angry, that's when temptations come and things may come out of our mouths that we didn't want, but they originated from our hearts. Ah, be careful. Jesus is hungry, hungry, hungry. 40 days, 40 nights. That's a long time not to eat. And um, he, you could say, well, he's God. Well, he's 100% human and he's 100% God. So his, he, in his humanness, he felt the hunger, the pains of the hunger. And, and Satan's like, hey, you must be hungry. Oh. Can you smell, oh, can you smell the... The fine bread coming out of the oven. In fact, you're so good. You're if you're the son of God, you can just turn these stones into oh, hot, hot bread. The steam. The oh, it's gonna be good for you. It's gonna be good for you. It's gonna be good for you. And Jesus is like, look. He answered it and said to Satan, "It is written." That's the way you talk to Satan. If you got to talk to Satan, it is written. It's in the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. That proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus uh, takes this out from Deuteronomy 8, 3. The Deutero he'll be quoting Deuteronomy throughout his talk with, with Satan. Deuteronomy must be so important that Jesus is quoting it that you and I this week should be reading the book of Deuteronomy and get into it and see what God wants us to do. It's so amazing that I it didn't catch this before, but it says every word. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. These words are not just idle words to you and me. According to Deuteronomy 32, 47, these are not just idle words. They are our very lives. It's just amazing. This word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. According to Psalm 119, 105, these words are healing. Psalm 107, 20, and he sent forth his word and it healed them. I'm telling you, as we speak the word, you're going to be healed. You're going to be healed of cancer. You're going to be healed of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, blindness, deafness, uh, GI problems, lung problems, heart problems, leg problems. In the name of Jesus Christ, a digit is going to grow back, a thumb, a toe. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's my belief. Because we are able to do as Jesus did and much more than he did. And that's the word of God, according to John chapter 14, verse 12. Mm -hmm. It's the word. It's not us. It's the word that goes out. Psalm 107, 20, and it heals. It's the healing is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20, 21, 22. My son, my daughter, listen to my words. Pay attention to my words. Uh, incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them and health to their whole body, head to toe, whole body. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word, the word people are following, even if they don't know the word, they follow the word. I mean, even to the New Testament, and you know, we we talked about it in Deuteronomy 25:3. It said that if somebody is caught in 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 uh, wrongdoing, they get 40 lashes. Where did they get that? They got it from the word. The word is is a standard. It's a standard for rules and laws and regulations today. It's a standard. I shall not murder. Why should we murder? If you murder, you're going to get in trouble. So it's all here. It's in the word. It's in the word. 
And then the devil took him up, Jesus Christ, in verse 5, the devil takes Jesus Christ up into the holy city, Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, the highest point of the temple. When Herod built this temple, it was amazing. So the temple had been built first and foremost by Solomon, David's son. And then uh, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it completely in 586 BC. And then it was redone again when the Jewish people got out of exile from the Babylonian Persian empires. And they came back and they rebuilt it. It wasn't as pretty as Solomon's. And then Herod, the great he just rebuilt the whole thing during Jesus' time. And it was, they said it was uh, with splendor. It was amazing. So he takes him to the pinnacle of the temple and says to him, if, there he goes again, if, you know he's the son of God, you know he's the son, but he's like putting doubt and uh, trying to put doubt in Jesus' mind. Jesus is not going to doubt who he is. He knows who he is. He's the son of God. He is God himself. He is the creator of the world. He is wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8 that created you and me and the world. It's Jesus. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Oh, and now Satan quotes scripture. Look it, look it, look it. Satan quotes scripture and we found it in verse 6 because he says, you throw yourself down because it is written. Uh, Satan says, for it is written. Oh. He shall give his angels charge over you, Jesus, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash, lest you dash your foot against the stone. He's quoting Psalm 91, 11 through 12, but he missed a line. Ooh, that's what Satan does. He misses a line. He takes something out. He tricks you and me. He's trying to trick Jesus Christ to show himself off. You're God, ain't you? You're good, aren't you? You're all that, aren't you? You're supposed to be a miracle worker, aren't you? Throw yourself, let everybody see and go, oh, that must be Jesus. Throw yourself down. But it's so funny that he says, you shall, and he shall give his angels charge over you. And he misses this line to keep you from all your ways. Satan doesn't say that. To keep you. Shamer in Hebrew, keep you. To protect you, to honor you, to, to have a shield of protection around you in all your ways. See, Satan doesn't want you to know that God will keep you from all your ways. He will keep you from everything that is coming against you. No weapons forged against you. They're going to form, but no weapons formed against you will prevail that you're gonna you're gonna mount up like the wings on the wings of eagles you're gonna fly you're not gonna be weary you're gonna walk and not faint satan doesn't want you to know all this he doesn't want you to know that god will keep you that no weapons formed against you will prevail that you could rebuke and you rebuke every tongue that accuses you because this is the heritage of the servants of the lord this is their righteousness for me declares the lord he doesn't want you to know that in in isaiah 54 17 he doesn't want you to know Isaiah 54, 10, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will never be shaken. No more covenant of peace be taken away from you. Thus saith the Lord who has compassion over you. He doesn't want you to know that Jesus Christ has compassion over you. And he's trying to keep this away from Jesus Christ that he will, they will keep you for in all your ways. Satan can quote scripture, but he takes key words out to trick you and me and he's the one that's saying it is written nasty he's the angel of light isn't he he's the angel of light i believe it's in first corinthians chapter uh chapter 11 verse 14 so jesus said to him it is written again jesus says it is written you shall not tempt the lord your god he takes that out of Deuteronomy 6 16 so Jesus going back to Deuteronomy don't tempt your Lord your God you can't tempt your Lord your God I am God and so again the devil took him up See, they, Satan doesn't quit Satan doesn't say oh my these people know the script I'm gonna leave them alone they know this they good oh they go to church today I worship you I worship you they sing it oh I worship the Lord I'm gonna leave them alone no 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 he doesn't give up he's coming after and he goes the third time again the devil says again 
again in verse 8, again the devil took him up uh, uh, to an exceedingly high mountain. We don't know where this mountain is. It may be uh, Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And showed him all their splendor and their glory and their riches and their pomp and their, uh, their silver and their gold and their diamond. He's showing them the world. He's showing them power. He's showing them glory. He's showing them strength. He's showing them kingdoms. He's showing them rulers and authorities. He's like, look at this. Look at all this. And, and he said to him, he says to Jesus, all these things I give to you. Now, how is he going to give to God and, and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit when God owns the whole thing? You see, in, in Genesis 1 and 2, God created the whole earth. It was beautiful. It was just beautiful. Because where God is and where Satan is not, there is peace. But Satan comes in in Genesis chapter 3, ruins everything, and, and God gave dominion to Adam and Eve. God gave dominion of this whole earth to mankind. So the dominion was given to them. Satan comes and usurps that dominion, takes it away. And you, you and I are like, well, why doesn't God just slap Satan in the head? Just like, bam, bam, like that and say, shut up, Satan. You're under my foot. And he is. But why doesn't he take the power away from Satan who rules this, the heir of this world? He's the king of this world at this time, if you will. Because if God did that, he'd be a liar. He gave dominion to mankind. He cannot himself take the dominion off because it's given to mankind. He can't take it away. If he did, he'd be a liar. He could do it, but he won't because he's not a liar. He cannot lie. So he sends his only son, Jesus Christ, as man to take the dominion away from Satan. And this is not the right time for God, Jesus Christ to rule over the earth. He will rule over the earth in the millennium, after the rapture, after the tribulation, after Armageddon. Then comes the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. This is not the right time. See, it's the right thing. Jesus Christ is the ruler. He's going to rule on the earth. It's the right thing. It's the right proposal, but it's the wrong time. May you and I know the times we're in where things can be right, but it's the wrong time. And may God give us the wisdom, as it says in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you, I will teach you, I will counsel you, I will watch over you. That's God, always giving. I will instruct you, I will teach you, I will counsel you, I will watch over you. That's God, that's the loving God, that's our loving Papa. Our beautiful Father. So it's not the right time here. and But Satan's like, I'll give you all this. If you fall down and worship me. Oh, so there is a, something Jesus has to do. So Satan can give him the dominion of this earth. And Jesus took away the dominion anyway and when he died on the cross and rose on from the dead on the third day. And it's just not the right time. It's, everything is done, yet it's not the right time for him to yet rule. He's waiting. He's waiting for men like you and me and women like all of, uh, around the world, men, women around the world, to come to him. He's very patient. He wants those who come to him to have eternal life. And he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. So he's waiting for people to come to him. And that's why he's prolonging, quote unquote, his time. His time is perfect every time. So uh, if you fall down and worship me, that's what Satan said in Isaiah 14 anyway. I will ascend above the most high God. I will be worshipped. That's why he was thrown out of uh, heaven. And then Satan said to him, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. And then, so this is what Satan says to him. You fall down and worship me. And, and Jesus says, away from, away from me. Away with you. Get thee hence, Satan. I love that. Get thee hence, Satan. In the name of Jesus, get thee hence. Get out of my sight. For what it is written, again, you shall worship the Lord your God and him you shall serve alone. And that's from Deuteronomy 6.13. And that, I mean, isn't that the commandments that we found in Exodus chapter 20? Uh, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. Uh, thou shalt have no images. Thou shalt uh, not use the Lord God's name in vain. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath. I mean, what is the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other God before you. Don't serve any other God. Not even yourself because our, ourselves become our own gods. 
gods. Be your own god. Be powerful. Be confident. Do all this. Be a doctor and, and rule. No. Be a doctor and serve. Be a lawyer and serve. Be a teacher and serve. Serve. Serve like Jesus Christ. Have compassion on people. Love people. Honor people. Give to people. Just like Jesus did. Give, give, give. Not to rule over people, but to love people. That's what Jesus teaches you, and that's what Jesus teaches me. Don't be your own God. And you and I, we don't be our own God. We don't allow other things of this world to be our God. We, are, Our only God is God. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sits, there is none besides you. You are God, and there is no other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is God and there is no other. And then the devil left him. Oh, he'll be back. He'll be back in the Garden of Gethsemane. He'll be back. He'll be back to, to try to kill Jesus in a boat, to, to try to tempt Jesus not to go to the cross. He wants him to go to the cross. He doesn't want him to go to the cross. In every single path Jesus takes, he wants to trip Jesus Christ. He wants to, uh, he wants to make God and Jesus a liar so that he would take control of the world. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Devil is ultimately going to end up in, not only the, in the pit for a thousand years, but then he's going to end up in hell forever and he's not the ruler of hell by the way Jesus holds the keys of Hades of death and hell Jesus doesn't want anyone to go to hell people send themselves to hell by rejecting love by rejecting the gift of salvation by rejecting the surgeon of surgeons who can open up their spiritual heart arteries but they won't allow it because they become their own God it's tragic it's tragic and the devil left him, and, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. The angels came and ministered to Jesus Christ. The angels come. He will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. God has his angels, and he will give command that they would take charge, and they would, they would come and comfort you he, uh, to, 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 to keep you from harm. And Jesus Christ, his blood today, if you don't have it, come to Calvary's cross. He, he came to bleed just for you. He came to not only give you life eternal and, and save you and me from hell, but he also came to heal your body. And as we speak in the name of Jesus, this word, this word has healed you. It's done greater things than a doctor or a physician can do. This word is healing. This word, for those who are oppressed with drugs and addictions and, and sexual impurity, this word right now has healed you. It has healed you. This word who, that you find yourself in, in financial crisis, get into the word. It will show you and instruct you in the ways you should go. This word is beautiful. They are not just idle words. These words, they are your life. And they are my life. You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. Yes, Lord, you are here. You're the King of Kings. We worship you. We worship you. You are here. You died for me on the cross. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, you rose from the dead. We worship you, my brothers and my sisters. Together we worship you. Yes, you are here, you sent your Holy Spirit to be in us. We worship you. We worship you. Blessed be Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be the name, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who was and is and is to come.